Psalms chapter 119 verses 57 to 63 64 hit or half or half we go through this lesson here preservation of the word safe care guard the saving of God has preserved his word preserves is, is a word that is a lot different from jelly jelly is a, a chemical compound that's part fruit but other things I guess you could say that's your modern Bible preserve is when it's the natural fruit itself the seeds the, the, the skin the berry itself and it's to keep up you preserve grapes for later to keep them thou art my portion O Lord do you have a portion of the Lord every day you can't survive on portion from yesterday or last week or last month or last year I have said that I would keep thy words you keep them do you preserve the Lord and his words we keep saying I mean we may not have the Bible tomorrow we don't have God in the schools we don't have God in the courthouses and who would have thought that back when I was a boy in the 60s in the 70s in the 80s in the 90s who would ever think that God would be kicked out and now he's, he's kicked out of the churches dad you may be the only word that your children will get in the future Do you keep them? again Psalm 119 11 thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee memorization of the word I entreated thy favor with my whole heart and how many times have we seen the whole heart do a personal study of Psalm 119 in the whole heart don't go asking for God in disbelief Jesus said ask seek and knock have faith that God will answer you enough faith that maybe God will say no maybe God will say not now maybe God will say yes but don't go to God asking for something oh, I don't think he's going to answer because then it won't be answered there will be no favor to you be merciful unto me according to thy word so you can find mercy of God in the Bible you got to read and study the word I thought on my ways everything I've done everywhere I went every path that I trotted every path that I made you know once you go through the bushes you you started a path and turn my feet unto thy testimony a repentance I looked at where I was going and it says turn my feet unto thy testimony I did a turn I did a u-turn I went back to the testimony I went back to the Word of God I repented of where I was going and found out by the Word of God I was going the wrong direction so there's a definition of repentance and somebody claims to be saved and has not repented has not turned has not shown the fruits of Christianity who has not left his sins or sorry for his sins they are not saved because repentance in the Bible is to turn I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments 
My ways were wrong. My ways were sinning. My ways were against God. It was rebellion. And quickly I turned and did what the commandments said to do. The bands, the, the groups of the wicked have robbed me. But I have not forgotten thy law. Again, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. There's no turning back. Nothing's going to stop you. And they cannot steal the word if you've put it into your heart. He's been talking about the word. He's talking about preservation. If somebody came and stole your Bible, would your religion be lost? See, we are the King James Bible, but if it's taken from us, you should still be able to serve God. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Do you rise up at midnight and thank the Lord, or do you complain and roll back over and try to get more sleep? When you get up in the middle of the night for the bathroom break, God on your mind, do you thank him? Did you thank him for not making a mess in the bed? Do you pray for people while you're doing your thing? When you open up the refrigerator in the, in the middle of the night to, to get that snack or get that drink, do you think of the light that comes on the refrigerator and thank the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you thank him that you're not in a nursing home where you can't go into the refrigerator and grab something to eat in the middle of the night? I mean, the best weight loss program in America is going to a nursing home. You'll lose instant weight. Because they sure won't spend your life earnings on food. I've seen enough of my family in a nursing home to see what kind of care they lack. I don't care what kind of education you have and what authority you have. I see the patients don't have. Disgusting. Give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Do you thank that righteous God, the judge? I am a companion of all them that fear thee. The right company. Who's your companionship? If the Lord were to come back in your group of people... Would that group of people be called up to heaven with you at the rapture? If not, there's something wrong with your companionship. And more so, if you're in a companion group of people, if the Lord were to come and, and they're left behind and they had no idea what just happened to you because you don't speak about the Lord and you don't speak the shame, 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 shame. If you're at work and the rapture happens, they all know right away. He spoke about that. It must be so. Well, where did Johnny go? Where did he go? Guy left his clothes and you. Was he murdered? What the heck happened to him? And then let them believe conspiracy theories by the Antichrist. And of them that keep thy precepts. Not only are you companion them that fear thee, do, does your companionship are with those that keep the word of God. Oh, I got fellowship with Christians at church. Do they keep the word of God? Do they do the word of God? Wouldn't it be great if you're on a bus and, and you're either leaving from church or go, or leaving where you were going to church and, you know, you were out witnessing or going to go witness somewhere, going to knock on doors, going to go street preach, going to go pass out tracks somewhere or coming home from the event. Wouldn't it be great if that entire bus was just rapture? Bible says in Titus 2 13 to hope on the Lord. He's our blessed hope. The word is the Lord Jesus Christ. But 
Why not impossible the company you're going to be with? Be those that are called up to heaven together. And just think about the little conversation to go as you're going up. I think about the comfort of each other. Hey, was that the trumpet I just heard? And there goes the dead. Remember what the Bible says. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, now you think I'm full of it. I'll read you the passage. I'll read you. First Thessalonians. I'll read you what it says. In a company of people. After the Bible speaks of 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17, speaks about the rapture, speaks about those that are dead in Christ shall go first, and speaks about those who are alive and remain shall go after. What's verse 18 said? Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You're in a group of Christians that love the Bible. My God, there goes the dead. We Remember what the Thessalonians said? They said the dead shall go first. Anytime now the Lord is going to come and get, oh, that's right. Thank you. Let's grab more of those tracks and let's turn the bus around and go get more people before the Lord gets us. Stand by the grave. Look! They're gone! Believe on Jesus before he comes! Then when he does come, you go up to company of brethren together, joyfully, rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, or trying to bring in the sheaves. You think you think that's you think that's that's, that's fairy tale land? What happened when Jesus arose from the grave? All the saints that came up from the grave going around, hey, I'm you know learning. Hello, my name is Elijah. Hello, my name is, is Jonah. Hello, my name you know. Being a witness, and guess what? Many did not believe even their testimony. You ought to have company with them that fear God and keep his word. You want me to go one step further? I'll go one step further. You ought to keep company with those that have the King James Bible, no modern Bible. Because that's not the, that is not the word of God. That is not the precept of God. Can you imagine walking up to a worldly judge in a courtroom and say, Your Honor, you can't arrest me in this charge. Look, I cut out everything I didn't like in this law book. And listen to the judge laugh at you. How come they don't, how come they don't do that with the laws? The new American law. And they go in there and wipe out everything that they've done and criticize that they can't be guilty of. Boy, wouldn't the presidents of the United States and Congress love a book like that? Go in there and change all the things that they're guilty of. Preservation. What is preservation? In verse 63, as a group of Christians, you keep each other in the word and, and you comfort one another. When we just talked about comfort last night? Wait a minute. You get a, bless, a daily blessing by the word. If you obey the word, you get a blessing. You get a cleansing by the word. You're quickened by the word. You are to uplift the word. You get power in the word. You get victory over the word in, in, by the word. You get comfort by the word. You get preservation of the word. Your life is to be a blessing and to receive a blessing, to be a cleansed life. To be alive, to be uplifted by the word and the word alone, and no idols, no religion, no nothing but the word. And you are to have power, and you are to have the victory, and yet you are to be comforted, and you are to preserve that word and keep it, and to be in the right company. You know what happens if you are in the wrong company? You will go into the bottom filth of the scum of opposite of evolution. It's called the lowest common denominator. You won't improve a group of people. They will bring you down. Look at where America is today and look what she has allowed. She is not an uplifted country no more. She's down with a filth in a sewer hole. Look at England. She was a nation that nowhere did the sun set on her province. She sent out missionaries as a country with the Bible and preserved it. 
and came out with the RSV, I believe it is, and sunk. Now you got to send missionaries to England. America has come out with American Standard Version. She has not preserved the Word of God. She has not kept it safe. She has not cared for it. You have other Bibles in, the, in churches. There are churches out there that have any Bible you want. And the Lord tarries. I mean in the future, tomorrow, in the future, you will need to send missionaries to America. Instead of America sending missionaries. Look at England. You know what the next best preserve, uh, preserve, uh, preserve, preservance of the Bible? You know what the next preserving of God's Word We've already had the King James Bible in 1611 and has been preserved. What is the next preserve? Ugh, keep blowing that word. What is the ne next safe caring guard and saving of the Word of God? Jesus said, Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. You're going to have an eternal Bible. And I am going to be a part of that eternal Bible because I'm going to have an eternal soul. I will be forever with the eternal God, the eternal Lord Jesus Christ. Forever in the eternal city of New Jerusalem. With people around me that have been saved by this word. People who have been blessed by this word only. People who have been cleansed by this word. Not by man, but by word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. People who have been quickened by the word. People who have uplifted the word onto their lives. People who have had power through the word. People who are in New Jerusalem because of victory of the word. People who have been comforted by the word. And preservation of the word will be there when we're in New Jerusalem. There will be no modern versions. I believe you will have the King James Bible. I believe you will have the Geneva Bible. The Bible that is said is written of the blood of the martyrs before the King James Bible. You've got to keep the Word of God safe in your life. I have seen people come out of church and as they drive down the, uh, the driveway onto the road, I've seen their Bible fling right off into the road. That's not keeping your Bible safe. I have people brought to me, my family in particular, come in, hey, look at my Bible, look how fat my Bible is. Well, what the heck happened to that? I left it out in the rain. Well, that's not keeping your Bible safe. How about care for the Bible? Honey, have you seen my Bible? Come on, we got 15 minutes to get to church. Where's my Bible? Kids, where's my Bible? Find my Bible. That's not care of the Bible. I've seen kids take their Bibles, swing across a basketball court, and pick up their orange globe of, of, of idolship and worship that. How about guarding your Bible? You know, if, if somebody came into this house and today to, to take our Bibles from, they're going to have a time with us because they're going to have to do a search of every room in this house. Because the Bible is everywhere. They're going to have to have a, uh, the, Soviet Union, the Soviet troops out there in front of our house under the President of the United States throwing, I don't want to go in there, let's draw straws and see who goes in there. 
Because we're going to be in there for eight hours. How about saving the word? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How about protecting the word? I just, I, I, this came to my heart right now. What about protecting the word? I used to, and I don't do it no more. Look up verses, what other Bibles said compared to King James. I don't want to get involved in that filth. Because once I swim in that filth, that filth is going to stick to me. And if I am put in jail for the word of God one day, and my Bible is taken away from me, I may quote that perverted verse and not God's verse. Keep the modern Bibles out of your vocabulary. Keep them out of your eyes. The, the Bible says that Jesus says your eye is single. And if it's full of light or if it's full of darkness, those Bibles are darkness. Don't even look. You don't even need to look at them. They're dangerous. And Satan will use the two. Well, go ahead and see what those Bibles say about that verse. And I'll put that into your head instead of your heart. You know, once I learned that one in the Bible said, oh, S-O-B, I can't get that out of me. I can't. And there's verses in here I want to learn. I got a verse over here on a card. I can't learn it from Jeremiah. As much as that card is sitting there, I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. I can't memorize it. But I can open you up to the passage in the Bible that's a modern Bible, and it says S-O-B. What glory is that going to get out of me? And I only learned that verse to show it to my grandma to get her out of that Bible and get her into a King James Bible. And how many years ago was that? 1989? 89 or 90? I had to use that verse. And here we are in 2014. I remember, I memorized that one, but I haven't memorized a lot of work, the scriptures from the King James Bible. To my shame, the earth, not the world. He's got the whole world. And you let Satan have the whole world. The earth, O oh Lord, is full of thy mercy. God's mercy is out there. It's not like God is holding it back saying, no, you can't have it. Mercy of God is over Orlando. It's all over the land. It's all over Daytona Beach on Saturday night. And all you got to do is come up to one of us and say, How, what must I do to be saved? And we'll show you the mercy of God. Mercy is there for the Christian, as well as the lost. And with that, teach me thy statutes. What's that mean? Teach me what I need to do about mercy. Teach me what I need to learn about mercy. Teach me, Lord, everything you want me to, to get the full benefits of everything that Psalm 75 said, that I can get the benefits of God. Promotion comes down to east, west, north, or south. But God gives the promotion. Lord, I want everything that you want to give me. And I want it right and I want it by the word. How's that? It's up to you, Christian, to keep the word alive. What's going on with the modern Bibles today is the Bible is dying. But when it's preserved in heaven, it'll never die. It'll never die out. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made.
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when Christ shall come with shout of